what's been your experience and not even knowing who I was calling to, not knowing if they were doing great or not. And first and foremost, everyone responded to my inquiry. I, I, I was like 12 for 12 and, and actually having conversations. So that told me really one thing about the type of people that chose this. And, and the second thing is just every time I talked to someone, they had were nothing but raving fans of EOS, the life it provides and what they get to do to help out small business owners. And so it was just that combination of, wait a second, I can coach, I can run my own show, I can take what I've already learned and everyone there really seems to, to, to love what they're doing. So hello and welcome to another episode of Better Business, Better Life. Today I am joined by the delightful Scott Goodridge, who's based over in Arizona, who's just shared with me that it's like 34 degrees um, centigrade over there. So I'm very jealous as it's a bit wet and miserable here in New Zealand. Hey, Scott, um, great to have you on the show. So Scott is, it's just to give you a bit of an intro, he's a professional EOS implementer, but he's also a business owner. He and his wife actually own a small business as well. So welcome to the show, Scott. Thank you, Deborah. Thanks for having me. Uh, absolute pleasure. Yeah. Um, so we were having a chat, as we always do before the podcast, just to kind of get a sense of where you've come from. So would you mind sharing your story? Like you, you started in really large scale corporate stuff and now yeah. all of a sudden you're a business owner and EOS implementer. So tell us a little bit about that journey. Yeah, it's, it's, it's quite the shift in it and had some great opportunities early on in my career. So I started off in sales and working for a wireless provider back in the day when Phones were not very small and, and not very, not of the same sort of functionality as here, but that's where I got my feet wet in sales and worked into a leadership role there and then joined a Capital One, large financial services firm, and was leading uh, several different call centers there. So providing support, service, sales to our various clients, doing some client retention work as well, uh, and then shifted in the, the other part of the financial services world, which is uh, dealing with uh, distressed consumers and, and those that are carrying debt and, and in one sense collecting on them and then with another company actually helping them get out of debt. So I've kind of been on all sides of the financial services spectrum, and but always on the operational side, just just leading these, these large teams and um, either working within current call centers or actually launching call centers in various parts of the world. So spent some time in India working with call centers, Manila, uh, and then built out a call center in Costa Rica. So ha- had some great experiences with those companies, just watching them grow and, and serve more and more customers each and every year. Mm, great. So, I mean, yeah. that's um, that's a big, big jump from doing yeah. that to sort of, you know, I would say having your own business and, and doing EOS, which is aimed more at those mid-sized, you know, companies. And right. um, it's a very simplified operating system that helps those mid-sized companies. So tell me why. Why yeah. EOS? Well, you know, there's uh, although I had those experiences with those larger companies, that entrepreneurial flame, if you will, has always been around. And when I, when I was a kid, I was always thinking about what's the next kind of business idea and opportunity and pursued a couple of those just to kind of pay my way through uh, the money that I needed in, in school. So I always have a little money in my pocket. So I, I started there, um, did go away from it. But back in 2016, as you mentioned, I, I did uh, buy into a franchise and, and start my own small business. So kind of relit that flame, if you will, in doing that. Uh, that business is a haircut and color franchise here in uh, just outside Phoenix, Arizona. You, you can tell for that, those in the video, uh, it's a bald guy with a haircut shop. Uh, so that in and of itself, it's got its own interesting challenges. But you know, that's that's been a uh, just an, another set of learning experience and really sort of wet my appetite and say, okay, now what's it like to be on your own instead of having that support of those larger organizations? Um, I think the, the thing that really struck me with an EOS and, and the theme that I've been able to carry forward from those times, whether it's large company or even now with my own business, is, is the theme of coaching and teaching. I would say that's the common tie that binds. And, and it really has is a thought about it. It's funny how these things tend to find you, but that's really that's my purpose, right? Coaching, yeah. teaching, helping others. That, that's what really has, has hit home and where I've always seemed to find my way to that, whether it is leading a large team in a large organization or now helping folks out as they consider EOS and, and implementing that within their, their business. You know, mm. I spend a little time even coaching basketball along the way, coaching youth sports teams. So that, that coaching thing is around me it's and, and around, it's, yes. it's been <laughs> part of it. So yeah, that, that fits nicely. And uh, the, the operational side is also a nice fit within the EOS framework. And, and you said to me that, you know, you actually um, kind of almost sought, sought out EOS, if you like. You went through networking and stuff. You went to try and find it. So what, what was it that attracted you to EOS? 
Yeah, it was interesting. There's there's a couple of things that really uh, made helped me make the made, made pretty easy decision when, when it came right down to it. Uh, one was, yeah, we did some networking and sort of shared my story, what I'd done, what I thought I might do next. And the person I was speaking with had a ton of familiarity with EOS and said, you know, you really need to go read this book. And, and I'm a willing learner. And I, and I so I went ahead and read that. And I'm like, well, wait a second. Yeah, I've been doing a lot of those things, just not calling it that. And yes, maybe doing it at a different scale, but totally got the concepts right away. And then I read the next book and I'm like, which was Rocket Film, like, oh, okay, now I'm starting to see this. I get that integrator side way more than, than maybe the visionary side, only because that's what I had been doing on the operations side, but this was all coming together in my mind. But Deborah, the thing that really turned the tide for me, and this just, I think, speaks to the, the community that EOS has and that now part of, I reached out to probably a dozen or so EOS implementers, uh, really doing cold calls, for lack of a better term, but just saying, you know, tell me about this. What's been your experience? And not even knowing who I was calling to, not knowing if they were doing great or not. And first and foremost, everyone responded to my inquiry. I, I, I was like 12 for 12 and, and actually having conversations. So that told me really one thing about the type of people that chose this. And, and the second thing is just Every time I talked to someone, they had were nothing but raving fans of EOS, the life it provides, and what they get to do to help out small business owners. And so it was just that combination of, wait a second, I can coach, I can run my own show, I can take what I've already learned, and everyone here really seems to, to, to love what they're doing. That felt like a pretty good fit for me. It is really interesting. Is that I was completely drawn by the people and the values, and I think yeah. even you you can you know people can share their values. You can kind of go, yep, I absolutely love that. But seeing them in action, because if you think about it, that whole do what you say, um, yeah. that's what those guys were doing. When you when they don't, we don't not return calls. We don't re, do not don't not reach out to kind of help people. That help help, help first attitude as well. So yeah, yeah. I, I've seen that uh, myself in the community. It's we actually do walk the talk. <laughs> yeah, there's no doubt. Yeah, that it's it's yeah. through and through because you know when. We, and when we talk about core values with clients, I had uh, actually speak with a client about this yesterday. When we when we talk about core values, and I was, I was helping them through the the core values exercise, and I said, "Well, yep. is this really true of you as you go through it? Because I can tell you that if it's not, you're not going to fit." And I actually used our EOS values as that. And I said, "One of you, we have grow or die. We are always learning. And if you're not interested in reading the next book, watching the next video." going to the next seminar, attending the next meeting, whatever that is that EOS is providing for us. If you're not interested in doing that, you're going to feel like a square peg in a round hole. It's not going to work. That's why it's core for EOS. And being able to paint that picture for our clients, they, they you get the head nod and they start to realize, oh, that's what you mean when you're talking about karma. Yeah, that it really has to be something it's that you, you live it. And then if you don't have it, you'll know it and you won't fit. It will, it will not be part of who you are each and every day. Yeah. Okay. So, I mean, you, um, you and I know a lot about EOS, yeah, but maybe the listeners right. may not. Yeah. Um, so, really, I mean, it's designed as a, a simple, pragmatic set of tools you can actually use in the business. And it really is based around a framework around the sort of six key components of the business. Do you have a favorite tool in the EOS suite that you love to, you know, more than anything else? I was going to say it's the people analyzer. I mean, for yeah. me, that, that one is time and again, you know, having a, the career that I had, which was really although we were answering customer calls, but at the end of the day, I, I was really working with large scale operations and it's a people business, right? You needed to have those, the, the right people doing the right work. We needed to provide them the structure and the systems to do that. But at the end of the day, most of my time was spent on trying to find ways to help people get better, whether they were mm. coaching others or, or doing the work and, and talking to the customers that we had, but the people analyzer. And so, I, so in that, Deborah, I used a bunch of different assessment tools, right? Anyone yeah. that spent any time with different companies, different system tools. That you talk about the simplicity of EOS and what that people in analyzer tool does, and, and for those that are not, not familiar, right, it's a very simple tool that really determines: is this person aligned with your core values? Are they the right person for who you are as a company? You know very quickly with a simple exercise, yes or no. And then secondly, do they actually understand what they need to do every day? Do do they GWC? Do they get it? Do they want it? Do they have the capacity to do the work that you're asking them to do? One page, one line per per like. That simplicity, but it speaks to exactly what you need to know about the people that you have working for you. And in these small yeah. companies, if they if they're not a good fit or if they're doing the wrong type of work or they're not capable of doing the work, that's going to hurt you because you have limited resources both financially as well as the number of people that you can afford to keep in the company. So mm -hmm. that people analyzer to me is just just speaks to the simplicity, but also the effectiveness of what EOS can bring to a small business. 
I agree. And I think, you know, using it on a day-to-day basis is absolutely fine, but also with the reviews and things. I remember when I used to work in corporate, you know, yeah. we'd have these things called PDRs, Performance Development Review Process. And I think, you know, I can remember one that was about 14 pages long. And, you know, it took, it took it took like half a day to fill it in. And then you were really careful about how you filled it in because you wanted to make the best impression. It was it was a really a lot of bullshit in, in some respects because it was just a, a tick box exercise. Whereas a people analyzer actually takes all of that into this very, very simple and in, in the annual review and in the quarterly conversations. It's just such a, a nice, easy tool. Like nothing yeah. we do in here is ever bigger than a page. And I love that. <laughs> oh, I like, I'm, I'm in the same boat. I used to just to block out time between the Christmas holiday and the New Year holiday, which was always the one where reviews were going to be due right back in January and people sort of get back from their break. And I was like, oh, I have five days of reviews, right? Because I've got to take, you know, it's four or five pages long and I got to write out this description of what all happened. About. It was just like, what, what am I doing this? And really at the end of the day, people just cared about, you know, what is this ranking and what is my pay going to be? It's like, yeah, it was an exercise in futility. I'm like, are we getting anything out of this work here? And, and there's such value. And it really facilitates a great conversation, great open and honest dialogue with the folks on your on your team, right? And that's what we talk about. It helps us build really healthy teams and, and really really gets a high functioning team when you can put it right out there and say, this is, this is what's going on here, right? This is who yeah. we are. This is what you're doing. Does that make sense? And whilst we understand that, you know, all six components are equally important need to be worked on, you know, the people part is probably the biggest, uh, the part where people have the biggest challenges, I think. Yeah. Um, you know, we, we, it's very easy to say, yeah, we've got some kind of idea of our vision, we've got some kind of idea of what we're measuring, but it, the people can make or break it. So that's why it's just so key to get those right people, most right. importantly, doing the right the right work. <laughs> yeah. Great. Okay. Um, I, I forgot to ask you in the beginning, I usually ask you, what are you most proud of so far in your life? Because, you know, you've been around the planet a few times. What are you, what are you so proud of professionally? And yeah, uh, let me start on the personal side. You know, I've got two great adult children. My daughter, uh, Courtney, just got married in November to a wonderful young man whose name is Jesus Dahl. So the, they are married and live about 15, 20 minutes from my wife and I here in Arizona. So nice. just excited to, to see them start their lives. We have a grand puppy uh, as a trial run. We'll see if there's grand babies <laughs> down the line, but for right now, yeah. have a, they have a new puppy. May uh, I ask what the, what the kind of puppy it is? What's the grand puppy? They have a Bernadoodle. A, this is a, Ooh, a, a Bernice nice. Mountain Dog and, and yeah. Poodle combined. And Bernice Bernadoodle is, is quite the dog. He's a, he's, he's a good right. pup. So, yeah. Oh, really, yeah. <laughs> and so, uh, that, you know, that's their, their trial. They're do, doing well with that. So we'll see where that goes. But, you know, I'm just happy to see them starting in life. They're both doing very well uh, in their careers. She's a CPA. Uh, he's a business analyst. You know, they're just getting things started. It's great to see that. Nice. And then I've got a, my son um, graduated school a couple years back. He was a college baseball player, so he got to play some college baseball down in Texas. Um, and he just got engaged, and I'm um, actually heading out there uh, shortly to, to meet with them and start to talk about what their wedding's going to look like about a year from now and, and what they're thinking. They're out in California, just moved mm-hmm. out there. So two grown kids doing well, and I've been married to my wife for 30 years. We celebrated our 30th anniversary just at the end of last year. And uh, so we've had uh, you know, just – really blessed, I, th- I think, with the life we've had and the, and the kids that we have. We're really good, good, strong family unit. So just, just proud of that and the, and the strength that we have within our within our core four, if you will, our family. And now I'm growing to five and six as we as we add spouses into the mix. <laughs> Perfect. And professionally, yeah. what do you think is your most proud professional? Yeah, moment? there's, you know, there's a couple, I would point to two things. One, just from, you know, we talked about the, the, the when working with these larger uh, companies, it was just, we took and, and built out a, a call center in Costa Rica that um, that was started. We basically we, we didn't even have a building, so we found a building. It was just a concrete shell, and to see that come to life and then fill it with 150 folks there over the course of about a 16, 18 month period from kind of start to finish, and you know, I led a lot of that project, then ultimately managed that location. Uh, just was. Just great to see something like that come to life. So that's on the one side. The second was when we did open up our, our haircut shop and mm-hmm. I got a chance to, to walk through it the first time and start to see it come to life and look around and say, oh, this is kind of ours. Like this is our place and we're going to build this thing out. And it's a small business, so it has its ups and downs. But there was a real sense of pride in having that come to life and saying, oh, this is going to be our place. We're going we're gonna to make a go of here. Yeah, it's really interesting, actually, isn't it? Because I think a lot of people think, well, if you're part of a franchise, then, you know, EOS isn't, isn't for you. And yet we've got a couple of um, EOS implementers who have bought franchise businesses and used the EOS principles and grown them to be, you know, really amazing businesses that look after them um, professionally and personally. So the EOS principles, they're not restricted to just a certain type of business. They are kind of very common principles, I think, that can be used across the world. It's a franchise, whether it's your own business, you know, whatever it looks like. 
how are you how are you yeah. using it in your business now yeah yeah i, could, I couldn't agree more i, I and uh, yeah i'll answer your question first and i'll go back to your topic so yeah. it, it's a it's a great one i actually had a conversation about this earlier today uh so, so we actually have gone through the i think the big things for my, my wife and I, as we, we've looked at it, is is one, the weekly meeting, uh, our L10 meeting, and, and getting some real discipline and, and accountability associated with having that meeting in place and really tackling what are the big items that are in front of us each and every week and inviting some of our managers from our shop into that and giving them some exposure to these are the types of decisions, how do we address it? It's done two things. One, it's, it's consistent. The agenda is there. Don't have to think about it. So that's great. But then two, within that group, just realizing that we don't need to talk about these issues each and every day. It's not story time. Let's get in there and actually use this time and only this time dedicated to solving the biggest issues that, that we're facing. And that's just freed up a little bit of my wife's time, right? There are still small businesses. You're still going to have these emergency items, if you will. You can't get away from them. But being able to concentrate the conversations around items that can wait into that L10 meeting has actually freed up some headspace for her to work on some other things, which has been great. Nice. So I think that L10 meeting really counts. And the second thing is just having a plan. We were just going through what's this thing look like five years, three years, whatever, and going through and, and laying out our plan using our, our vision and traction organizer document has been really valuable as well. Like that just getting our arms around this and, and having a solid plan, knowing where we're going. Uh, those two things combined have been great for us. Yeah, I think when I work with a lot of family businesses and particularly husband and wife kind of businesses as well. And I think that often, be, especially if you're husband and wife or even as a family, because you're meeting kind of regularly, you think you've got yourself across and all the circles are connected. But in actual fact, um, you don't make the the real focus time to talk about the important things. And that L10 meeting just does that. It gives yeah. you that formal time to do it. And I, I think that's probably my favorite tool, if I'm honest, even though it's a, it's a, it is one tool that has a whole bunch of other tools in it, like the rocks and the scorecard. But sure. it just it just changes i think if you can start running that in your business and do nothing else it will actually still fundamentally change the way you run the business yeah could, could agree more uh, yeah and it's it's look it's, it's hard to pick a favorite as you said earlier right there yeah. because there's so many things to provide value in so many different ways and and it's it's funny because i you know i'll let you know if the people analyzers are going to be our favorite tool we're going to be working on that within our team here in the next uh, oh, couple yeah. of weeks so we'll come back and <laughs> see that actually <laughs> is the case really i know the one we're using you know most frequently right now is the l10 on the franchise side just to not let go of that point is interesting i had a conversation with a franchise owner today um it was really just getting started it's just a couple months into his journey the franchisor so the the headquarters if you will they're running on eos and so the principles associated with that, they trickle down to their franchisees. But for some franchisees who really grasp all of the tools and, and take the time, whether they work with an implementer or just take the time, take the learnings from the franchise or re read the book and put in some of these tools that we're talking about, they have a much better chance of succeeding. You know, so many franchisees, it's, it's, it's really a struggle because their promises are made and it's, this is going to be great. And you talk to folks that have had success in whatever the, the franchise area is, and it's, it all sounds great. You got all this energy and excitement and you're ready to go. I'm a business owner. I'm going to do this thing. And then the reality sets in and it's difficult and there's challenges. And, uh, you know, we were just, he and I were just talking like, how would we able to, what would be the right process to make this work? for all the franchisees that he's talking to because he thinks some are dabbling and some are actually using it. So it was a yeah. timely question you had because it's going to be interesting how he and I take this forward. Um, yeah. and, and I've got, I've got a couple franchisees that I'm talking to say, you know, what is it that, we're, that you're trying to get out of this thing and, and how can this help you? Oh, fantastic. Yeah, no, I say I, I've, I've definitely, it's been interesting. So in the three and a half years that I've been doing EOS, I've, I've done, I've gone through the process of around about 30 companies and, and all right. different walks of life and all different, my, my real specialty is family business and professional services. Um, yeah. But what I find really fascinating is that, you know, um, it is a framework that actually works in any kind of business. Like you, it, People always say, oh, it's a cookie cutter approach. And so it's not going to work for me. But it's not a cookie cutter approach because it is just a framework. It's not, we you know, we don't have the answers. We don't tell you what to do. We yeah. just help draw out of you things to put into this framework that helps keep you. Um, I say it doesn't take away the entrepreneurial spirit because that's really important. We don't want to lose that. But it gives you a little bit of stopping you from really zigzagging to all the bright, shiny objects and having some real clarity about where you're going. To me, it actually enhances the entrepreneur spirit because the founders that we talk to and that you deal with, that I deal with, these are the folks with the big ideas. They are the visionaries. They're, they're the ones that are looking for the next great thing to take on. And by providing the structure and the discipline to execute on the idea, it actually should free up that space 
for that creativity. So yeah. in, in any way, this is the multiplier, if you will, of the business and not something that's going to put you into a, a cookie cutter. The, yes, the tools are same, but that, that predictability builds consistent, consistency and actually will help you scale. Yeah. You should, that's exactly what you want, right? You want to grow this business. And, and <laughs> so that's what we're trying to provide for you here. We're not, by no means is this going to slow you down or take it away. It's, a, it's actually going to give you that multiplication factor that you're looking for. Yeah, actually, it was really interesting. So I've got a really good friend who's a leadership coach who I've done some work with, and he's seen what EOS is about. And, and he actually kind of hit the nail on the head the other day about why he loved it as a leadership coach was he said that actually it's the only kind of operating system where there is a box that is for the visionary, which gives the visionary, the founder usually, a role in the company um, without them having to run the business because most other businesses um, and operating systems are very structured and, it you know, it doesn't doesn't split out that that beautiful role that the visionary and the founder has, which is about pushing the boundaries, taking it to the next level, having the big ideas, changing, disrupting, doing all of that. Um, there's no other sort of uh, system or or methodology that has that kind of a role for that person, and that's why it is perfect for entrepreneurs. Yeah. Yeah. Deborah, don't you find this is also the the, the this is the challenge I challenging was uh, I was talking about franchisees, but but whomever we're talking about it mm-hmm. is really that letting go of that because it is your business and that, and that that's the toughest thing. And when you truly have a visionary that can let go, they, they either created the structure or they've made the right hire. They're going to make the, the short-term investment um, in, in the U S to, to get to that long-term, get me out of this business and let me be working on the business. Right. So I don't have to worry about the day-to-day stuff when they can really see that path. That's when things really start to happen. But th- there is a moment there when they've got to make that decision to say, okay, I'm, I'm doing it. I'm going to let go here a little bit, right? Yeah. Yeah. And it's hard. I mean, I'm a visionary myself. If I didn't yeah. do the rocket fuel test, so there's a test online you can do called rocket fuel and it yeah. tells you whether you're a visionary or integrator. I am extraordinarily high visionary, but also quite a high integrator as well, which um, is, is a little bit uncommon, but um, I, I worked as a GM and, and, and CEO for various different companies. So I think that's probably built into me, but as a visionary, um, it is really hard to let go because, you know, you, you have this thing about, but this is my, I don't know if it's my baby, but I've, I've developed this thing. I've, I know how to do it best. I'm not sure how to, and we're not good at necessarily helping others to understand how it's done. So what I loved about the EOS framework is it really gave you an opportunity to go, okay, you know, which which role should I be in? Delegate and elevate, that's where I should absolutely be. Where do I add the most value? That's what I should be doing. And then bringing other people in. And I've had to learn that, you know, you, you there's a difference between delegation and abdication. So I think in the past I would abdicate. I'd go, I don't want to do that. You just make that happen and, and go ahead. And, and then they wouldn't do it the way that I expected or or didn't get the outcomes I wanted. And then I yeah. get really disappointed by it. And now I've realized that actually delegation is, you know, it's about being a good boss. It's being able to actually not only tell them what um, you what they need to be doing, but um, help them with the training, make sure they've got the process in place, you know, um, really supporting them, giving them the time and attention that they need so they can then take over. And then, of course, it becomes easy to let go because when you've got somebody who's the right person in the right seat they've had the training they know what they need to do they know what the outcomes are they know how they're being measured all of a sudden you can actually um yeah you can let go because you know that that job has been well and truly looked after yeah mm. by the way i'm an integrator through and through and through so oh, yeah, think, oh, yeah, yeah so we, we, we would we, you and i could create the rocket fuel that we needed for any organization if we wanted to do that yeah. right did a couple of pieces but yeah uh, actually but, good 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 thing though so yeah, if people don't yeah. understand you know we've talked about the visionary i think most people know what a visionary is Sure. Tell me, uh, you're, so you're an integrator. Tell me about yeah. the integrator role. What is that? What's the purpose of that? And what should somebody be looking for when they're looking for an integrator? Yeah, so it's interesting. And even when I was in a larger corporation, I had this reputation of the get things done guy. Um, and, and so that's kind of always carried with me. And that's really the integrator, right? That's the get things done guy or gal. We, we, we often describe it as the glue that holds things together. But this, this is the individual that is going to lead the team manage the team and hold the team accountable for all that needs to get done while at the same time looking to clear all of the roadblocks that may get in the way and make that easier manage whatever large projects is out there and then hold people accountable to delivering on the commitments that i have overseeing the pnl so the glue person right so they're sitting right on, on top in the middle of it and they are really making sure that all the i's are dotted and t's are crossed across the organization yeah. Um, so that follow through skill is, is critical. That attention to detail is critical. The ability to run an effective meeting is critical. Those are the, the roles, the responsibilities that an integrator will, will bring to the table. And you know, when you know when you've got one, because you, you don't have to worry about following up on that integrator, they're going to get it done. Now you're going to want to 
inspect what's going on there, but you can put it in good hand, put the company in good hands when you've got that right integrator in place. I think it's actually really key. I mean, I think that uh, unless you can actually have an integrator, it's really, really difficult to let go because you said they are the, the glue. Yeah. They're also the conductor. I, I was, they were, I've got a conducting baton stick in my office. I talk about that. So the conductor's role, they keep the whole orchestra together. They make sure they're playing yeah, on time. Right. But they also have to keep the visionary out of the day to of the business, right? Because um, I know I can be really dangerous with my ideas. And because I'm really fast thinking, really fast moving, really fast talking, you know, before you know it, I've got an idea and I'm already executing on it. And in the past, I would literally run my team team of assistants and things ragged because every time I mentioned something they'd be jumping on board trying to get done what I wanted to do um, and not all of my ideas are great ideas and often I've, I've moved on next week and I'm not interested anymore and I had a client that, that, that was um, didn't have an integrator and she was this amazing visionary lady and really you know that business would not have been where it was for, um, and they had about 100, 140 staff I think it was that business would not have been where it was if it wasn't for her but her leadership team and there was a lot of them when we first started, they were absolutely run ragged. They were doing 70, 80 hours a week. And when I started to delve into why that was happening with them, it turns out that, you know, they were trying to execute on all the ideas that the visionary had. And and so they were burnt out. Like they were literally kind of going, we can't do this anymore. We can't run any faster. We can't. And the visionary was frustrated because she's saying, but they're not getting the stuff done that I want in the time that I want it done. Um, and when we added an integrator into that business, it just changed it completely. <laughs> it's a, it, you know, you, you, it, we, we use the term governor, right? But it's a governor. It slows the engine down, if you will, and keeps it keeps it at speed because you're right. As a true visionary, you're going to have these ideas. And because of who you are to your company and to the people that you've brought in, they're going to respond mm -hmm. to those ideas as they hit your brain and you're going to want to go chase them. But then you're on to the next thing with that visionary side going on there and said, oh, that was no, that was just an idea. I was just brainstorming with you. And, and the team is like, no, 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 we're, acting, we're, we're trying to execute on that. Like you, you said you wanted to go after that. And that integrator can yeah. be that buffer, that governor and, and controlling what's going on between visionary and rest of the team. And as long as the visionary knows not to run those end arounds and to work through his or her integrator, th that's, that's where this is, that's got to work. That, that has to be in tandem because if there is an end around where that visionary has an integrator in place, but then goes around that person, you're going to have yeah. the same breakdowns. Yeah. But it really is a missing link. I think it's a missing link for any entrepreneur listening into this and sort of thinking, I, I don't know how to let go. I don't know how to, you know, get, get this business to grow without me being involved. That integrator role, I think is, is the missing link in all of us. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, tell me a little bit about, you know, what are the kind of clients that you like to work with, Scott? What are they, what's an ideal client for you? Yeah. So, and the beautiful thing about EOS is you can choose to work with it within a vertical or, or find a group of clients that makes sense, whether that is uh, engineering clients, service oriented clients or manufacturing, or you, you can choose to keep some variety around it. And for me, I, I haven't, I've developed that niche yet where I have the a certain type of client that's there. Yeah, I'd love love to spend more time in areas which I'm passionate about. I, I love sports of, of all kinds, and you know, trying to take some of this into that arena is absolutely in my mind. And what is the right way to do that and to take that on? But I, I can tell you right now, I'm, I'm working with a, a couple service clients. I've got a contracting client. I've got a retail client. You know, so so just getting off the ground here with, with me starting my journey, it's a mix uh, of clients, which is great. That's wonderful variety. And when I'm learning about these different businesses and I spend time with them, but but then two, you find out that the issues and challenges that companies have, they're very similar, right? Yeah. The, the business yeah. that you read, you know, we, as we provide a little transparency and dig in the business a little bit and say, oh, okay, these issues, they, they tend to pop up time and again, and, and you see them there. So, I, I, But I do enjoy the variety of what EOS allows to me, me to do when I'm working with, with clients. Yeah. I think you're absolutely spot on. I mean, I spent sort of 25 years in the whole leadership with for other people. And then yeah. in my coaching, which I've been doing for almost 20 years now as well, I've actually, I think I've worked with about 600 different clients. And, and there is the, although I do have a specialty being family businesses, but professional services, the, the, the clients were from all different walks of life. And yet, as you said, the same issues pop up. Um, sure, they're different for the specific product or service, but the actual issue, the deeper the root cause of the issue um, usually comes back to the same thing. Thing. so yeah. Sure yeah yeah okay cool so yeah. um 
but the, in the key thing is they have to be open-minded, right? They have to be wanting to, to grow. They have to be wanting to accept some help and have to be prepared Absolutely. to make some change too, don't they? No, no doubt about it, right? If you're gonna if, if you're gonna drag them in, you're gonna drag them around, right? So you got to make sure that the, the folks are ready. And that that's that's also for me. I, it's, it's wonderful, and you know, for, for folks that do. You know, have an interest. Want to talk to everyone, right? The the beautiful thing is we do spend some decent amount of time matchmaking, right? As, as I call it, right? We'll spend yeah. some time with, with a company, not only talking about the US, but really determining who's right for you and who do you want to work with, and, and is this going to be a good fit for you? Because we would never want someone to take something on and just experiment with it, because it is a commitment. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's a it's a great commitment. It's a worthwhile commitment, but it, it we want to be very real and very open and honest with our clients. Saying, look, we got to make sure that you are, right? You're a hell yes or a hell no. But if you're a maybe, well, then you're just in hell. So let's get to hell yes. <laughs> let's get going on this, right? And that's what the spirit we want to have when we're we're introducing this con- these concepts to our clients, potential clients. That's it. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Hey, I always ask our guests to give us three top tips, um, and this can be sort of you know from your experiences as, as running a business as you have done, yeah. or from being in a business, or a book, a tool. I, I don't mind. But what are your three sure. top tips you'd like to share? Yeah, so I guess I'll start. The first one was one that really hit me just a few, it's been the last month or so. Great book for anyone that's out there and, and you, you go through the ups and downs of owning a business. The book is called The Gap and the Gain. It's by Dr. Benjamin Hardy uh, with, with Dan Sullivan, who's a business coach here as well, built a tremendous business, a strategic coach. But that, that book, just, just a phenomenal book and just speaks to the life of a small business owner or even an like an individual coach, whatever the roles, but just understanding that there are so many more wins than losses and spend the time in the gain and less time in the gap. And you'll be much better off no matter what you're trying to approach personally or professionally. So highly recommend the gap in the gain. Yeah, it's so funny because I'm actually just listening to it on Audible right now. And it's my um, current book. I've just finished Who Not How and I'm on to the gap in the game. So, yeah, that's, yeah. I agree. Great book, yeah. isn't it? Spot, spot on there. Yeah. Spot. The second thing that, that I would say is just know your numbers. Know, know the business. We didn't really spend too much time talking about it. But, but have a scorecard that reflects what it is that you're trying to drive in your business. Don't just wing it. Uh, <laughs> understand the details. It, it's oftentimes, particularly when you're getting started, it's like, well, I just, I know this is the right thing to do. And I, you know, my gut's telling me this, my instinct and the instinct serves entrepreneurs so well for so long. But when it comes time to actually evaluating the business and making sure you're spending your time on the right things, understand the data. Uh, mm-hmm. Really, really important. So, yeah. I would just and, and we talk about a, a scorecard should be something that you know, if you're sitting on a, a desert island somewhere, maybe right. in desert Arizona, you should know <laughs> somebody should be able to come over to you while you're sitting yeah. by the poolside with your nice little margarita and give you a sheet of paper, and you should be able to look at the last 13 weeks' results and particularly this week's results and go, hey, is the business doing well or is the business not doing well? So, yeah. you know, getting the right scorecard can be difficult, but once you have it, it's it's invaluable, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. Short-term predictor, but also a good reflection of, of the health and also then really determines what I need to focus on because if there are things that are getting missed there, you know exactly where to spend the time to get that back on track. Assuming that that scorecard is the right reflection of the activities that need to happen week in and week out to keep your business moving forward. But if you don't know that, you are flying blind and that's going to be very difficult to get your business back on track if it is struggling. So scorecard is critical. Yep. The, the third thing is um, making sure you understand for you, the type of company that you have, the things that you value the most, not even the product or service you're delivering, but we talked about core values earlier. Yeah. And mistake also that, that I see made quite a bit is that you, you evaluate a uh, potential uh, employee coming into the organization and, and the, the CV looks good, the background is there, the experience is right. You really do need to fill the spot because you are stressed and this is a role that you want to add but you don't have a way to test to make sure this person's going to fit. And we, we talked about that people analyzer, but making sure that the core values are clear, that you use them to attract the right folks to your team. This is really the root of all evil. And so yeah, I, I'm going back to that people analyzer, but understanding who you're bringing into your organization and, and the fit that they're going to have there. And it's really a way to quantitatively determine that fit, right? Do they meet mm-hmm. the core values that we've got for those organizations so they don't? It's not going to work, regardless of how experienced, talented, skilled, educated they are. So as you hire, take fit into consideration and use a tool, a quantitative tool, people analyzer or something else to make sure that that person's going to be really fit in your organization and value the same things you do. 
I think that is a, yeah, absolutely key. I also think that when we write job descriptions, I think we should be using values to attract, but also to, to scare off people or, or de- yeah. detract people. You know, sometimes you should be writing an advert where somebody either is the, is the hell yeah or hell no, right? They yeah. either read it and go, hell yeah, that sounds like me, or oh no, that's not, or maybe they're, they're, if they're a, a not or a maybe, then they're definitely not the right person. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Yeah. Yep. Okay, um, cool. We're, we're running out of time, sadly. I mean, great. I could talk all day, but I've got to go into another meeting today. Yeah, of course. No, I yeah. appreciate the time. It's been great. Really enjoyable yeah, conversation. Well, really appreciate I always, I always yeah. enjoy talking to fellow ASA supplementers, and yeah. I think that you know we share a passion for business. We share a passion for making a huge difference in the world, and that's obvious when I talk to all of our fellow EOA implementers. But I want to ask now, you know, so if people have been listening to this and they've gone, gosh, I would love to have a chat to Scott about some of his learnings or about potentially taking on board EOS in the business, how do they get hold of you, Scott? Sure. Uh, so EOS Worldwide, ton of resources there. So visiting the website, there, there's tons of information there that's that's available to anyone out there. There's actually some free tools that folks can get a hold of. Uh, personally, for me, you can email me. My name is Scott, S-C-O-T-T dot Goodrich, G-O-O-D-R-S-H at EOS Worldwide. So you can find us there. But the beautiful thing about that Worldwide app is if you're in a spot where no one's nearby, you want to work with someone locally, you can find someone local that you can yeah. geographically find that implementer that's close to you, talk to a couple, see who's a good match for you. So critical, as I mentioned, that matchmaking experience is mm-hmm. so crucial. Uh, but yeah, you know, we're, we're, I think we're all here to help. We all share the same passion for helping out small businesses. And, I, and you know, you can't go wrong talking to, to someone and really seeing if this is the right thing for you and your company. I think that's absolutely spot on. And you know what? That's the other thing I love about the EOS. Like we we all effectively run our own little businesses. We're all looking for work. We're also looking to work with certain clients. But we actually have this amazing abundance mindset, right? It, it is absolutely about finding the right person. You know, if people don't want to work with me here in New Zealand, there are other implementers. Please go and check them out. Um, and I know that, you say, as you said, if you go to the EOS implement true implementer guide or no, implementer, um, there's a map thing. You can go to your code. I think it says find an implementer near you or something like that. But yes, right in that way. Website, it's there. Yeah, check it out. Yeah, so go in there, put in put in your postcode, put in where you are. They'll they'll give you some options. Um, and and as Scott said, you know, it has to be a good fit. You know, you want somebody that you can trust, somebody you can be open and honest with. So um, please do that. But hey, Scott, absolute pleasure talking to you. Thank you for taking the time out. Thank for you. Busy day. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I look forward to keeping in contact and seeing you at the next conference. <laughs> appreciate it. Appreciate it. Thanks, everyone. Thanks for the time and all the best to you. Oh, thank you very much. Okay. Bye bye.